Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julia Boyle, and I'm the Executive Director with Autism BC. Thank you so much for joining us for our Autism BC Connects with Kelly Baines and Lucas Gates, our two newest board members that were elected at the end of 2020. Kelly is courageous, diligent, and passionate about many things, including autism awareness and helping people grow. Lucas is kind, determined, and outgoing. He is a third generation Vancouverite and received his autism diagnosis at, um, at the age of six. Today, he is an active self-advocate um, and respected in BC. So we're gonna spend about 15 or 20 minutes uh, chatting and getting to know them better. If you have any questions throughout the interview, please type them into the chat box below and we'll, we'll answer those questions at the end. So to start things off, we're gonna play a fun game of would you rather, uh, there's no right and no wrong answer. Just say what first comes to mind. So I'm gonna ask you both each question and Kelly, you can answer first and then Lucas, you can answer afterwards, okay? You ready? Yep. Okay, the first okay. question is, would you rather win the lottery or live twice as long? Live twice as long. Yes. Um, I'd say I'd probably want to live to live long, you know, live long and prosper. You know, I'm a I'm a bit of a nerd, but I mean, hey, <laughs> I'm a someone who wants to be infinite. Okay. All right. Next question is: Would you rather lose your keys or your cell phone? Keys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Kelly's boat as well. I'm definitely into the, if I lost my keys, um, that's not a big deal. My cell phone is pretty much, I got everything on there from my social media and all that stuff. So um, if I lost that, that'd be like the end of me as I know it. <laughs> yeah, I know it is hard to survive without it. Um, no next question, uh, would you rather always say everything that's on your mind or never speak again? Say everything that's on my mind. I don't know what it is, but I kind of agree with what Kelly's saying. I'm, I just am vocal and all that matters. So um, it's just, it's kind of coincidental that Kelly's her voice is very similar to mine. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are on the same page. Yeah. No okay, kidding. No kidding. Let's see if that changes. So would you rather be stuck on a broken ski lift or in a broken elevator? A broken elevator. Oh boy. You're not claustrophobic. Um, you know, actually, I was stuck in a broken elevator once before, twice before, so I am not a fan of that. I probably and I don't ski, so um I'd rather take the option than going broken on broken ski lift because I do not want to go for a broken elevator again. Uh, it next happen. question. Yeah. Next question. Would you rather uh, would you rather have a cook or a maid or a, a cleaner? A maid. I could use one right now, actually. <laughs> I'm actually going to bucket. I'm going to say I'm going to need a cook because, um, again, uh, my mom's gone. All oh, she's the best cook that I know of. But I mean, I don't. I'd rather go for cook. You know, just want to get anything I want. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is the last question. Uh, would you rather hear the good news or the bad news first? The bad news. There's always going to be good or bad news regardless, but I'd rather get the bad news out of the way first than to focus on the good news because there's always going to be a flip side, especially with what's going on uh, right now as of this taping, of course. Totally. Okay. Well, thank you for indulging us with these answers. Sounds like you're very similar, in, in, at least in terms of your would you rather questions. Uh, so now I have a few regular interview questions for you. Um, are you guys ready? Let's go. Okay, great. So the first question is for you, Kelly. Um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your family's autism journey? For sure. Um, so I'm born and raised in the United Kingdom and moved here just over 20 years ago. Um, met my husband, Bapindra. Um, I think we met about 15 years ago. We've been married almost 14. And we have two um, perfect, beautiful sons. Uh, Iman is 11 and Ishar is eight. Um, to be honest, nine years ago, I knew absolutely nothing about autism. 
um, probably had heard the word a few times, but didn't even stop to look up what it really meant or what it was. Um, and then eight years ago, um, that word just crashed into our lives. Um, Isha was not even one years old and he was being diagnosed with autism. Um, just a really like crazy roller coaster time in our lives. Um, I'm usually um, not the strong one in my marriage. It's my husband. And um, I realized really quickly then, like, I had to be really strong for everybody. Um, because until we accepted what was going on, we couldn't get Isher help. Um, so that was my goal. Let's accept this, move on, and get Isher the support he needs. Um, and yeah, I just, um, I'm his biggest supporter, I'm his advocate. I will push anything around, um, you know, for him. And um, just have learned a lot over the last eight years. And we've had lots of good days and lots of bad days. Um, the nice thing is at the end of it, I have a perfect family, um, blessed with two healthy sons and um, just lucky that Isha chose me to be his mom. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Kelly. Um, yeah, I know we'll learn a little bit more about you as we go, but I, I appreciate you sharing that. And so my next question is for you, Lucas. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how your self-advocacy started? So um, I'm, thanks so much, Julia. Um, so for um, my name is Lucas, of course. I'm born and raised in Vancouver. 20, I'm, 20, I'm 27, almost 28. Um, my advocacy journey really started because of my mom. And I assume she's also following this um, this watch right now. So thanks, mom. Um, but of course, it, it was really mainly my parents who really gave gave me that leg up when it comes to that, because I feel it's it was really important that she was myself, my advocate on behalf of me, because she did not only just focus on people with autism, because I also have a sister with Down syndrome as well. And of course, you know, with both communities being so linked together, it's, it's inc you know, it's really incredible. But of course, um, because my mom sort of stepped back a little bit from the role, I sort of took her, I took from what she taught me and ran with it. I'm now, of course, with today, I'm part of many um, autism um, advocacy kind of things with Voice of Autism, uh, Pacific Autism Family Network. I'm affiliated. I'm also Philly with CAN, Canucks Autism Network, and uh, yeah, just recently joined the Aid Canada Initiative. So uh, having that kind of voice in an autism community is really important, you know, if you think about it that way. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Um, so this next question is for both of you. So maybe I'll have Lucas, maybe you can answer first. Uh, what made you want to join the Autism BC Board of Directors? What I, what made me the reason to join the board of directors? Simple. I want to make a difference in people's lives. You know, I see what what Autism BC has done, especially considering I actually have many great connections, including you, Julia, and the rest of the team. Um, but I mean, it was really more or less that there needs to be more representation on boards. And of course, um, and of course, we we know very well that it's incredibly important to listen to all our voices, not just from a, a kind of perspective that they're speaking on behalf of us. You know. So I feel it was nice to have that kind of change and knowing when I went through the process and whatnot, it was really, it's great to be part of this organization and helping even, even our next generation happen too, because like I wrote on the pot and like on the pot, um, the blog and stuff, I said, I'm, I'm glad to be the first on the board, but hopefully not the last. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more about that, Lucas. Um, okay, Kelly, Kelly, what made you want to join the Autism BC Board of Directors? Yeah, similar to Lucas, um, I wanted to get involved so that, you know, I can make a difference, even if it's just for one person. Um, I noticed there isn't uh, Indo-Canadian representation on the board, and so that was really big for me. Um, it's not something a lot of people talk about in our community, and I'm really hoping to change that. Um, I'll share since I joined, uh, you know, lots of uh, other moms have reached out, and they're really happy I've joined because for the same reasons as representation and people don't talk about it. So I really hope I can make a difference. Yeah, that's, that's great. I think you both bring, um, you know, really unique lived experience and, and that's very important to us to have, 
you know, a diverse representation on our board and, and both of you contribute something really unique to that. So it's, that's really great. Um, okay, Lucas, I have another question for you. What are some opportunities that you think are essential for the autism community in BC? Sorry, I just wanted to double check. Was that question for me? Yeah, it was. So I'm just wondering, what are some key opportunities or needs uh, that you think are essential for the autism community in, in BC? Thank you for the thank you for that question. Um, yes, I do believe there is a lot of in, um, in opportunities in um, in autism uh, in BC. One of them, actually, that I think is really important, especially with the pandemic going right now, employment. That is huge because, again, I I still I, even though I'm already employed with plenty of other things myself, I'm glad I'm at least I'm in that um, category. There's a lot of places that are looking for work, and that pool is I'm. I'm yet untapped you know it's um i'm surprised a lot of people have not yet looked into that pool because there's a lot of people out there and a lot of people that would rather just stay neurotypical folks that would just rather stay home and just you know not not bother and just get government checks it's really unfortunate you know there's a lot of opportunities out there and i'm seeing it firsthand you know i see i'm like i'm always seeing help wanted help wanted help wanted why not just hire neuro um, hire people on the spectrum you know the the, the stats don't lie yeah what are some, sorry, I have a follow-up question for you, Lucas. What are some key strengths that you think that the neurodiverse community can offer in as an employee? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I really do think that um, that one of the main aspects, um, big benefits of having uh, people on the spectrum, um, um, autistics or person, people on the spectrum, I know the language can be interchangeable. I don't, don't know all about, I know that firsthand. Um, work ethic. Work ethic 110% when it comes to people on the spectrum because when they hire someone, let's say, for example, I know people who are working in like the tech sector, they notice one little one or one little O that could potentially mess up a code because that is actually where um, some tech companies are really going hardcore on it. I know a few of them around Vancouver that actually have hired people. So that's, I think, if you hire someone who actually has the go, has the attitude, you're going places. Yeah, good attention to detail for sure, for sure. Okay, Kelly, uh, this is our last question. What do you hope to see for Autism BC's future? I'm really hoping that by people knowing that we exist and what we do, um, that they think of us should, you know, this become a part of their lives. I know for me, I was so confused at the time didn't like there's just like almost too much information too many people telling you different things and as I look through the website and some of the events that Autism BC puts on some of the support network groups um, I wish I had known back then um, what was available I think this is a really good place to start um, and get the right information and get support from people people who are in a similar situation and so part of that is raising awareness in general, but also raising awareness in the Indo-Canadian community as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think that's all the, the questions that I have. So let me just uh, go look at our comments quickly here and see um, if there are any questions. Hmm. One of the questions is for you, Lucas. It says, I'd like to foster inclusion in my area, rotary clubs, including uh, especially neurodiversity. Are you available, Lucas, to zoom in for one of our meetings here in the Cowichan Valley? I would definitely be most interested in it. Um, just, um, of course, I do. Um, I am on Twitter or I do have a public Facebook page as well. So um, uh, maybe after the stream, uh, you could follow my Facebook page, maybe drop me a message and I'll, we can go from there. Um, I think um, if after the stream, I think, um, Julia, if you wanna share the uh, Facebook page information, that'd be great as well. Sure, absolutely. Uh, we have a lot of other uh, encouraging comments, but no other questions. So um, I wanted to thank you both for joining us and sharing a little bit about your journey and helping us, uh, helping us on our board. You know, these, the volunteers on our board really help give the direction that we need in our organization and just really help us connect across the province. So we're really grateful for all of your volunteer work on our board. 
And uh, I want to thank all the viewers for watching. And I hope that you'll tune in to our interview with the Stigma Free Society when we'll be announcing some exciting news live on Monday, February 22nd at three o'clock. And I also wanted to wish everyone a wonderful Lunar New Year, a wonderful Valentine's Day and a wonderful family day this weekend. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye.